Out of here from Sean Payton about that P.I. The P.I. no call seen all around the world. Obviously, it's a disappointing way to lose a game. Um, frustrating, you know, just getting off the phone with the league office. They blew the call. And, uh, man, there are a lot of opportunities, though. But that call puts it first and ten. We're on an E3 plays. And it's a game-changing call. It should never have not been a call. They said not only was it interference, it was helmet to helmet. There were two calls. They just they couldn't believe it. Did you call them or they called you? No. We spoke initially, then I called to follow up, and first thing Al said when I got on the phone, we messed it up. And um, But we go into these league meetings, and we sit as an ownership group, and we don't further evaluate the replay system. You know, there's just too much at stake. And it's, listen, it's a hard job for those guys because it's happening fast. But I don't know if there was ever a more obvious pass interference call that, you know, here it is, the NFC Championship game. So, tough one to swallow. That's certainly true. Sean Payton there. Ian Rappaport added this last night. Quote, senior VP of officiating Al Riveron did, in fact, acknowledge the missed call versus the Rams to Payton. The NFL admitted its error. The call should have been defensive pass interference, a source said. To the league office, not far from here, a couple blocks, hop in a skip, admits that they missed the call, guys. What's your reaction when this went down and having, I don't know if any of us slept for a couple of uh, minutes to sort of soak in as far as how it went? It's just incredibly infamous. Infamous. I mean, the two most frozen moments in the history of that place, I think, are the Steve Gleason block and the Nikel Roby Coleman mugging. I will call it that. Normally, you do this on a Monday morning. You do what I call referee radio. You go to the phones. What would you think of the call? This guy likes this guy. There's no referee radio. It was objectively horrible and wrong. And immediately, people are starting to say, was this the worst call ever? Was this the biggest blown call in league history? I look at it this way. If you look at the tuck rule call, that was a misinterpretation of a very confusing, convoluted rule. If you look at the fail Mary in Seattle, dual possession, strange moment with replacement officials. This was the best refs we got in the biggest moment in the easiest call of all time. Um, they could have gone two ways. Nikel Roby Coleman himself afterwards freely admitted, of course, I was beat. I hit him. I, it, was a, it was a penalty. Um, I just look at it this way. The referees are sometimes like quarterbacks or kickers or receivers. The human element overtakes them. My only theory is there is that someone did not want to be the guy to throw the flag in the moment to cost someone the Super Bowl. And in doing so, I think cost someone the Super Bowl. Peyton's right. Throw the flag there. The game is over. The Saints are winning it. Mm -hmm. It's a historically bad officiating non-call. And if Saints fans want their pound of flesh this morning, they are so justified in having it. I know you're waiting for the butt in all this, and there is a butt in all this. The butt in all this is that you're up 13-0 at home. You had four possessions in the fourth quarter in overtime. You scored three points. You had the ball first in overtime. These two things are separate. Vinovich and his crew blew the call. It was a pass interference that wasn't thrown, and it was also a helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. Sean Payton, 100% right. And the millions of Saints fans who are outraged this morning are justified. You should be beyond outraged. Like Kyle yeah. said, it might be the historically worst missed call in the history of sport. On the other end of it, though, I have such a hard time pinning an entire, not 60-minute, but 70-minute game on one non-flag. Right. The Rams came back from being down 13-0 on the road in the hardest of elements, did not have the ball first in overtime, and found a way to escape the Superdome in New Orleans with a victory. Does the call help their cause? Of course it helps their cause. The game's over if the flag yeah. is thrown. But please, this morning, in doing this, let's not take away from the fact that the Rams found a way to win that game as well. It was a horrible call, a horrible non-call, yes, but the Rams had an amazing win as well. I feel bad for the Saints players. I feel bad for the Saints fans. There were moments in this game where flags weren't thrown, and I was yelling at the TV screen saying, this isn't the NBA playoffs in the 90s. You can't just let guys play sure. in football. That's not what we do in the NFL. So frustration for those Saints fans, for sure. And you're very validated for feeling that way. But Shrey's... You hit it. And even Sean Payton hit it after the game. He said, we had our moments. You're up 13 at home. Put the game away. There's moments within that game where you could have shoved the Rams' face in the ground and you didn't. The final drive, they're going down to score, and you throw the ball on first down. The clock stops. Mm. If you run the ball for three plays straight, 
You milk that clock down, forcing the Rams to use a timeout. Jared Goff, the young quarterback, in his third year has 40 seconds to go all the way down the field to put his team in field position to kick a field goal to take it to overtime. Instead, he has over a minute, 140 or so. So there's moments within this game where you could look in the mirror and say, that's on me. Of course, you could take a snapshot and blame the refs. I could do that every game for the course of my 11-year career. I never did that. Mm -hmm. If I'm a player, I'm mad. I'm frustrated. If I'm playing for the Saints, but I'm, the way I do it, you can be mad at me if you want, if you're Saints fans, because they've been lighting up my DMs and hitting me up on Twitter. I would also look in the mirror and ask myself, what plays could I have made? What plays could we have made to change the outcome of the game so it wasn't in the refs' hands? I don't want to be dismissive to the Rams because I'm not going to sit here and say for the next two weeks the wrong team got in, mm -hmm. because they didn't. Mm -hmm. The right team got in. Mm -hmm. The Rams deserve to be in the Super Bowl, and let's give them credit. Will you be frustrated for an entire year? Yes, because the Saints were the best team in football, and they'll be sitting at home watching the Super Bowl like us. We're going to talk about this play a lot, but mm -hmm. one play never, I repeat, never determines the outcome of a game. Mm. This one kind of did, though. The thing about looking at the mirror and taking blame, and a lot of players did what you like Cam Jordan did that, and he said, mm -hmm. we could have done things or whatever. It's, it's on you then. This wasn't on them. This was a call that wasn't made. So at, I can't speak from a player perspective. As a fan watching this, if you're a Saints fan, if you're an NFL fan, you're, you're giving hours of your life every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, sometimes Saturday, hundreds of dollars on gear, tickets, and what you want in return <clears throat> in that relationship is trust. You want, all you want is for them to get the call right, and it didn't happen. And so then you're dealing with a trust issue with the league. I will say this. I give the NFL a ton of credit for having the accountability of saying it's a bad call because they for coming out and admitting it's a problem. And Sean Payton right away, quickly, in an emotional moment of the postgame, brought up those league meetings. Something has to change, and I feel like even as a fan, but also sitting in this unique position at this breakfast table every morning, I, have, I see how the league changes. Look what they did to the catch rule. Widely successful this year because they looked at it, stewed it over, made some changes. Something has to be done here, and I hope that this is the thing, unfortunately, at the Saints' expense to sort of catalyze that. Mm. I don't know if it's more, more refs on the field. I don't know if it's replay, all of that, but something has to be done. But, Kay, there were some missed calls that benefited the Saints. So, mm -hmm. like, we can't sit here and say one call changed the game because there were calls that benefited the New Orleans Saints. It didn't change the game for them. They, what did you say? They would have won? Sure. We'll chew on it all more. Maybe, they would have won. Or they don't win. Or they don't win. We don't know. That's, we'll that's the problem. Four-time management.